Good morning students. Today I am going to discuss anatomy of rectum. To begin with, let us go to the learning objectives of my today's class. I want to describe anatomy of rectum under following headings. Definition of rectum, it is extent, that is origin and termination, course of the rectum as it passes through pelvic cavity, its exterior and interior, relations of rectum with the surrounding structures, musculature of a rectum, that is it is arterial supply and venous drainage. I will be also discussing innervation, that is nerve supply of the rectum, supports of the rectum and also applied aspects of rectum in this class. Rectum basically is a misnomer. Term rectum literally means straight. It is straight in quadrupeds like dogs but not in human beings. Second point is characterless part of large gut. So typical features which differentiate between the large gut and small gut are absent in rectum. So we can define it as the terminal part of the hind gut before anal canal. Rectum lies between rectosigmoid junction and anorectal junction. What happens at the rectosigmoid junction? The three tinea coli become broad and fused together and the rectum is totally invested with two complete muscle layers, that is musculus externa. And instead of three tinea cola, we have their inner circular and outer longitudinal layers. It is not straight, as already said, it is curved, it has sacral and perineal flexures, which will be described in later part of this lecture. It begins at the level of third sacral vertebra when we compare its origin with the vertebral level, and is below the coccyx, average length of rectum is 12 to 15 centimeters. This we are talking about the unmobilized rectum. Interior of the rectum has valves of Houston. These valves support feces and allow gases to pass. They are just like shelves which support the feces and allow gases to pass. When we talk about the internal diameter or caliber of the rectum, to the, at the beginning, it is similar to that of the sigmoid colon. It is about 4 cm at its beginning, but it is dilated near the termination. The terminal part of the rectum is dilated and we call it as rectal ampulla. So at the beginning, you can see in the diagram, it is same as that of the sigmoid colon, that is 4 cm, but towards the termination, it is dilated and we call it as rectal ampulla. Since the rectum is part of large gut, let us have a talk about large gut. Large gut consists of colon, rectum, and anal canal. General plan of the gastrointestinal tract. Rectum also follows the general plan of the gastrointestinal tract. That is the layers or mucosa, submucosa, muscularis mucosa. In musculus externa, we have inner circular and outer longitudinal layers. The outermost layer is serosa, what we call as visceral peritoneum. But upper part of the rectum is covered by the peritoneum, while at its lower part is non-peritoneal. Large intestine or large gut is starts from ileocecal junction to the termination of anal canal. There are three special features of the large gut which differentiate it from the small gut. That is tinea coli, appendices epiplyki, postrationis or segmentationis. Tinea coli, there are three bands of longitudinal smooth muscle. Ostration is or pocket-like sacs caused by the tone of tinea coli. Then appendices epiploiki, they are fat-filled pouches of visceral peritoneum. As already said, rectum is regarded as the characterless part of large gut. It has no hostra, no appendices epiploiki, and no tinea coli. Tinea coli coalesce to form a continuous longitudinal coat. That is why we, in the musculus externa of the rectum, we have inner circular and outer longitudinal layers. So we can define rectum as terminal part of the large intestine before anal canal. Here cordinal features of large intestine are absent as already said. Length is 12 centimeters but can be extended up to 20 centimeters after mobilization. Diameter in upper part is 4 centimeters. Lower part is dilated as rectal ampulla. It is curved both in sagittal and coronal planes. The functions of rectum are it temporarily stores fecal matter. Coming to the extension of the rectum, it begins at the level of S3, lower end of end of the sigmoid colon, and this junction we called it as rectosigmoid junction. It ends slightly below and two to three centimeters in front of the tip of coccyx. 
that is anorectal junction. If we compare its level in males with the apex of the prostate, we say this anorectal junction lies at the level of apex of the prostate as shown by this black line or horizontal plane. Course and directions of rectum beginning and end lies in median plane. Two sagittal anterior posterior curvatures are there. One we called as sacral flexure. This follows curvature of the sacrum and coccyx. Then another bend is called perineal flexure, that is backward bend at the anorectal junction, caused by the muscle puborectalis, which encircles the rectum. This red line shows the sacral curvature, another line shows the perineal flexure. A perineal flexure is caused by the puborectalis. You can see here puborectalis encircles the rectum and produces this perineal flexure as shown in this diagram. So in the lateral view we can have two curvatures. One is sacral, another is perineal. And AP view we have three curvatures. Upper curvature is convex and is on the right side. Middle curvature is again convex and is on the left side. And lower curvature convex to the right. In AP view, we can see three curvatures, upper convex to the right, middle convex to the left, lower convex to the right. Peritoneal relations of the rectum. Superior one third of the rectum is covered by the anterior and lateral sides by the visceral peritoneum, as shown in this diagram. Middle third of rectum is covered by peritoneum on anterior surface. Inferior third of rectum is devoid of peritoneum, we can take it as non-peritoneal, lies in close proximity to the adjacent structures including bony pelvis which forms posterior relations of the rectum. So we can see the upper one third covered by the peritoneum both anteriorly on side is middle one third only anteriorly and lower one third is non-peritoneal. Visceral relations are different in two sexes. So what are the differences in the visceral relation of rectum? in two sexes. This section of the male perineum here, anteriorly, upper two-third, we have rectovesical pouch with coils of intestine. Now what is this rectovesical pouch? It's basically a pouch between the rectum and the urinary bladder, as shown by this yellow reflections of the peritoneum. So this pouch is filled by loops of small gut. Lower third of the rectum is related to the base of the urinary bladder, seminal vesicle, vas and prostate. So in males anteriorly we have rectovesical pouch. This pouch is filled by coils of small gut as shown by the red arrow. The lower one third of the rectum lies in relation with bladder, ureters, so seminal vesicle, vas and prostate. Anterior relation in females are different because in females we have uterus between the bladder and rectum as shown in this figure. So the pouch or the anterior surface of rectum and superior surface of the uterus, a pouch is created. We call it as recto uterine pouch of Douglas, which is demarcated by these red lines. Separates the rectum from uterus and upper part of the vagina. Upper two-third recto uterine pouch filled with coils of intestine and sigmoid colon. Like in males, it is also filled by the coils of intestine. Lower one third of the rectum is related to upper part of vagina and posterior fornix. Now here it is important to mention that pouch of Douglas is deeper than the rectovesical pouch. So rectovesical pouch lies at a distance of 7.5 cm from anal verge and lower of the pouch of Douglas lies 5 cm from anal verge. So what is the clinical importance of this pouch of Douglas? Pouch of Douglas is most dependent part of peritoneal cavity in standing position. Floor lies 5 cm from the anal verge. Fluid, first of all, collects in the pouch of Douglas being the most dependent part in standing position. Fluid may be blood, it may be a sciatic fluid, it may be fluid due to any cause, it may be fluid either because of trauma, infection or malignant cells. So they first of all collect in the pouch of Douglas. In, in living anatomy, we can pick up this fluid by using ultrasound. So what are the differences between anterior peritoneal relations of rectum in males and females? Now these two diagrams can make the differences very clear. 
in males between the rectum and urinary bladder we have rectovesical pouch and lower part of the rectum is related to urinary bladder and other structures in females uterus intervenes between the bladder and rectum so we have their recto uterine pouch of douglas now this recto uterine pouch of douglas being deeper than the recto vesical pouch it lies 5.5 cm above anus while as the recto vesical pouch lies 7.5 cm from anal verge now if we go to the lateral relations of the rectum so laterally this on either side of the rectum we have para rectal fossae so one on the right side and another on the left side what is posterior colpotomy? Colposcopy is the visualization of vagina and cervix with the help of colposcope, making a surgical opening through the posterior fornic to enter pouch of Douglas is called posterior colpotomy. A posterior relation is in both sexes. These can be remembered by using the rule of three. Now, what is rule of three? So, posterior rectum is related to three bones and ligaments which include lower three sacral segments that is bone coccyx number two and enocoxygeal ligament three muscles that is pyriform is coccygeus and levator and like three vessels which include median sacral superior rectal and lower lateral sacral vessels three sets of nerves one is sympathetic chain with ganglion impar anterior primary rami of S3 to 5, first coccygeal and pelvic splanchnic nerves. In addition, we have three other structures which are lymph nodes, lymphatics and fat. To make posterior relations clear, let us go to this diagram. So it is related to the lower three pieces of the sacrum, coccygeus and enococcygeal ligament. And the three muscles pyriformis which arises from sacrum and leaves the pelvis to get inserted on upper end of femur, coccygeus and levator ani. Levator ani is important as forms the pelvic floor. Now in this simple diagram you can see all the three muscles their origin. This is pyriformis, second one is coccygeus and third one is levator ani. The posterior nerve relations in both the sexes are we have three sets of nerves. Sympathetic chain. So on either side we have sympathetic chain which fuses at the ganglion impar. Number two is anterior primary rami of S3 to S5 and first coccygeal. And number three is the pelvic supraclinic nerves demarcated by this right circle. Posterior vascular relations are of same in both sexes. They are we have median sacral artery, median sacral artery as shown by this yellow line is terminal unpaired branch from abdominal aorta. It contributes to some extent to the blood supply of the rectum. Then we have the superior rectal artery which is the branch of inferior mesenteric artery. Then have lower lateral sacral vessels and corresponding veins. They form the posterior relations of the rectum in both sexes. So posterior vascular relations and the posterior relations we have median sacral artery superior rectal artery, lower lateral sacral vessels and corresponding veins. Summary of the posterior relation. So again we can go to the rule of three. Three bones and ligament, sacrum, coccyx and endocoxygen ligament. Three muscles, pyriformis, coccygeus and levator ani. Three vessels, median sacral, superior rectal and lower lateral sacral artery. Three sets of nerves, S3, S4, S5 and first coccygeal nerve, sympathetic chain with ganglion in par pelvic supraclinic nerves, three other structures are lymph nodes, lymphaticus and fat. Facial relations of, of rectum are very important surgically. Pelvic fascia around the rectum is thick in consistency. It is very important surgically to be divided for mobilization of rectum during surgery. If you go to this simple diaphragm, anteriorly we have bladder, posteriorly we have rectum. In between the rectum and bladder, we have dense fascia this diagram makes things more clear so anteriorly we have bladder posteriorly we have rectum in between the two we have dense condensation of the fascia presacral fascia is strong condensation connect this lower part of the sacrum with the anorectal junction lateral rectal ligament is 
a facial thickening around the middle rectal vessels extends from the pelvic wall to the rectum. So what is the difference between fascia denonvillers in males and females? As shown in this diagram, between the rectum and the urinary bladder and prostate, we have rectovesical fascia of denonvillers. This fascia is well developed. In females, between the rectum, posteriorly, uterus and vagina anteriorly, we have an ill-defined fascia. This we call as rectovaginal fascia. But this fascia is not well developed in females. So this fascia of denonvillers is well developed in males, but not in females. Interior of the rectum. In the interior of the rectum, we have three rectal valves, superior, middle, and inferior one. At times we can have the fourth valve. So interior of the rectum we have there two types of folds longitudinal which are temporary in lower part and disappear on distension. Transverse folds these are called Houston's valves they are permanent. These folds are composed of mucosa, submucosa and inner circular muscle. These folds are permanent do not disappear on distension. So the three folds are superior middle and inferior folds. These folds are permanent and they are called valves of Houston. The function of these valves is they act as the shelves. They support the feces and allow flatus to pass. The upper fold starts at the level of third sacral vertebra. It starts from right lateral and anterior wall. It is about 12 centimeters from anal orifice. Middle fold largest and most constant. It projects from the right wall at the junction of upper two third with the lower third of the rectum. It is five centimeters from anal margin. Forms nilatinous sphincter, superior anal sphincter. The lower fold is inconstant. Project is from the left wall. It is two centimeters below the middle fold. Fourth fold may be present. Two point five centimeters above the middle fold. It arises from the left wall. Arteries of the rectum. So let us go to the vasculature of the rectum. What is the blood supply of the rectum? So mucosa of the rectum is supplied by superior rectal artery. Superior rectal being branch of inferior mesenteric. Upper half of the wall is supplied by the superior rectal artery. Lower half of the wall is supplied by the middle rectal artery and inferior rectal artery. Arterial supply of the rectum as shown in this diagram. We have median sacral artery a branch from abdominal aorta. It also contributes to the blood supply of the rectum. Superior rectal artery, which is a branch from inferior mesenteric artery, supplies the rectal mucosa and upper part of the wall. Middle rectal artery, a branch from internal iliac artery, and inferior rectal artery, a branch from internal pudendal artery, supply arterial blood to the rectum. So in this diagram, you can see in these vessels, we have superior rectal artery, branch from inferior mesenteric artery, middle rectal artery, branch from internal iliac artery and inferior rectal artery branch from internal pudendal arteries. So these arteries mainly contribute to the blood supply of the rectum. Now why superior rectal artery is called the hemorrhoidal artery? So superior rectal artery is a continuation of inferior mesenteric artery. It gives three branches at 3, 7 and 11 o'clock position. Surgically these branches are important. Mother pilots are found at these sites that is 3, 7 and 11 o'clock positions. Venous drainage of the rectum. So venous follow the artery. Superior rectal vein drains into the inferior mesenteric vein which in turn drains into the portal vein. Middle rectal vein drains into the internal iliac vein which drains into the inferior vena cava that is into the systemic circulation. So rectum is a site of Photocaval anastomosis. Inferior rectal vein drains into the internal pudendal vein, which in turn drains into the systemic veins. So rectum, like the other sites in the body, is a site of photocaval anastomosis. What are the sites of photocaval anastomosis in addition to rectum? So we have lower end of the esophagus, is one of the umbilicus, one of the sites of photocaval anastomosis. Then we have colon and rectum. In the rectum, we have the superior rectal vein drain is inferior mesenteric vein that goes to the portal circulation. Middle and inferior rectal vein is drained into systemic circulation. So let us describe the rectum as a site of photocoval anastomosis. 
and osmosis occur between the superior rectal vein that enters into portal circulation and the middle and inferior rectal vein which drains into the systemic circulation so constituting a potential photosystemic shunt within the rectum as shown by this n circle diagram coming to the lymphatic drainage of the rectum lymphatic lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes follow the regional arteries lymphatic channels in the upper and the middle rectal that drain superiorly into an inferior mesenteric lymph node where from the blood supply comes lymphatic channels in the lower rectum drain superiorly into the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes laterally into the internal iliac lymph nodes so in this diagram lymphatic drainage has been shown so from the upper half of the rectum they go to the superior pre and paraiotic group of lymph nodes we call it as superior rectal nodes pathway second middle rectal go to the internal iliac group of nodes and lower part of the rectum and end canal some nodes go to the superficial inguinal group of lymph nodes when we talk about the nerve supply of the rectum we have sympathetic supply and parasympathetic as is true in the rest of the gut so sympathetic is are derived from hypogastric fluxus which contains fibers from l1 and l2 these fibers sympathetic fibers are vasomotor and carry pain inhibitor to the musculature and stimulate internal anal sphincter in contrast parasympathetic they are derived from pelvic supplanting nerves that is s2 3 and 4 they stimulate peristalsis and inhibit sphincter ports of the rectum is pelvic floor which is mainly formed by the levator and i must we have all your species as already discussed between the bladder and the rectum lateral ligaments of rectum that we have recto recto vesical fascia of dinal middle between the rectum and bladder recto vesical pouch also supports the rectum pelvic peritoneum and perineal body are other supports of the rectum in addition to pelvic rectal and issue rectal fat they also support the wall of the rectum d, uh, d or e digital rectal examination also called pr per rectal examination by per rectal examination we can feel anteriorly prostate seminal vesicle base of the urinary bladder recto vesicle filled with fluid posterior rectal wall lower parts of the sacrum and coccygis ischial supinus and tuberosity examination of the rectum and anal canal can be done with these instruments this one we call as proctoscope sigmoidoscopy is the visualization of rectum and sigmoid colon barium anemia or contrast medium is inserted through anal orifice into the rectum then an x-ray film is taken rectal two types complete which consists of full thickness of the rectal wall partial prolapse only mucous membrane of the rectum protrudes out rectal polyps growth or mass protruding from the mucous membrane of the rectum i want to summarize this class as under rectum is character less sternal part of large gut it lacks mesentery like rectum is a misnomer not straight but curved in human beings functions of rectum are storage of feces it is supplied by four arteries that is superior inferior and middle rectal arteries in addition to median sacral it is drained into portal and systemic circulations so it is one of the sites of protocol in stemosis lymphatic drain into aortic and internal iliac group of lymph nodes now let us go for a quiz based on this lecture you will be provided an mcq with four options you have to choose the most accurate one our first question is all statement about rectum is a characterless part of large gut b anorectal junction lies at the apex of the prostate c inferior third of rectum is covered by peritoneum d pouch of douglas is present in females our second question is which of the following arteries supplies mucosa of the rectum a superior rectal artery b middle rectal artery c inferior rectal and d median sacral our third question is posterior calpartomy means a visualization of pouch of douglas b aspiration of fluid from pouch of douglas c drainage of fluid from posterior fornix d drainage of fluid from pouch of douglas our next question is most constant value of rectum is a inferior rectal value 
B middle rectal value, C superior rectal, and D fourth value of rectum. Our fifth question is which of the following is a feature of rectum? Inia coli, appendices epiplyki, C hastrations, D none of the above. Our sixth question is floor of pouch of Douglas lies at a distance of dilated centimeters from anal verge. Five centimeters, B is seven point five centimeters, C is four point five centimeters and D is 7 cm. Question number 7. Which of the following is not a site of photocaval anastomosis? A. Rectum, B. Umbilicus, C. Lower end of esophagus, D. Duodenum. Question number 8. Which is not a posterior relation of rectum? A. Sacrum, B. Pyriformis, C. Levator and I muscle, D. Medial sacral artery. Our last question is, which of the following is not a true statement? Lower end of the esophagus is a site of photocaval anastomosis. B. Superior rectal vein drains into inferior mesenteric vein. C. Inferior mesenteric vein drains into inferior vena cava. D. Middle and inferior rectal veins drain into systemic veins. I have given QE at the end of this session. Go through these MCQs, then check the key which is given below. The correct key for question number 1 is C, question number 2 A, question number 3 D. Question number 4 B, question number 5 D, question number 6 A, question number 7 D, question number 8 D, and question number 9 C. Do not forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe my channel. Press on the bell icon to remain updated about more video uploads.